to Reframed, the Power Perspective podcast, and I'm your host, Carly Merclier. As both a Christian communicator and counselor, I want to equip you with the tools and truths that renew your mind and empower your soul. So as we explore popular topics influencing our perspectives, I want to offer practical techniques for reframing unhealthy thinking patterns and provide step-by-step pathways for emotional and spiritual health. This process of untangling our thoughts is not always easy, but thankfully God's word gives us instruction on how to reframe our thoughts, renew our minds, and redeem our perspectives in light of the gospel. It is this framework we will use to dispute discouragement, eliminate emotional reasoning, and empower our pursuit of the abundant life. So are you ready? Let's explore our current perspectives, expose the distortions we have come to believe, and grow deeper in our understanding of God's transforming power. Hey everyone, and welcome to the final episode of season one of Reframe, the Power of Perspective podcast. What a journey it's been uh, over these six weeks. I've so enjoyed sharing my heart with you, and I hope for those of you that have been listening, it has been encouraging and also a way of support as we press into these challenging topics that have really impacted our perspective in more ways than one. So today I want to do a recap of the last five sessions and offer some additional tools and truths that will help these perspectives of our purpose and God's promises, our people problems, and our pain to be continually renewed in the truth of the gospel. So I want to start by going back to the original context for this entire podcast. So if you haven't listened to any of the episodes and you're just joining us now, then you're going to get a little bit of everything and you can go back and listen to the individual episodes from here. But what I think is so powerful about this foundational passage of scripture we looked at very beginning in 2 Corinthians 10 is that when I say we have a power in our perspective, I want us to hold tightly to the fact that we have been empowered by the Holy Spirit to defeat strongholds, to battle against distortions, and to win and claim victory over our thoughts and our feelings and the discouragements of this world. But something I think we each can ask ourselves daily is how, right? How do we apply God's truth, this divine knowledge of God's power through scripture to our lives? And this is a great first question to ask. You know, how do we do this? So I want to give some tools, right? So we have this truth of you have been empowered by God's spirit, by God's word, by the gifts that he has given us in himself because he is in us and working through us. So what do we do with this? How do we access this power? I'm going to give you four steps here. Number one, when we have a thought or a feeling or I would say just a distressing experience, we have to capture it, right? Because what can happen? Our thoughts can run away from us. (laughs) And so what we can first do is make some space for that thought. We have a thought. We don't necessarily have to believe the thought or move through that thought, acknowledging it as truth. Because sometimes our thoughts aren't true. Just because we think it doesn't mean it's true. Just because we feel it doesn't mean it's true, right? And so we have to, one, capture that thought. Recognize it, name it, ask yourself this question. Is this a true thought? Is this an irrational thought? You know, we have two sides of our brain and sometimes we function more out of the left than the right or more out of the right than the left. And so we can identify these things by acknowledging, is it really rigid? Is it really logic minded? Is it black and white? Or is it really emotionally charged? You know, am I mind reading? Am I personalizing? So after we do this, after we capture this thought and create a little space where we can pause and question what the content of that thought is, then we bring it to truth. We say, okay, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm thinking. What does God's word say about it? What we will come to find is oftentimes, I don't know, maybe this is just for me, but oftentimes my thoughts and feelings do not line up to the truth of scripture. And this can be helpful. And from a cognitive perspective, we see how we have to dispute 
core beliefs and irrational thinking with truth. So we have to first identify God's word as true and then apply that truth to dispute the lies that we've continued to believe. In addition to this, the next step would be to pause with God's perspective. This is where we allow the implanted word of God, as James says, to change us and renew us and transform our hearts. This is through prayer, through praise music, through meditations and affirmations based on scripture. Something that I love to do is create daily dedications. I will take a thought or a challenge in my emotions and then I will find a passage of scripture that challenges that thought or emotion and I'll create a statement out of it. So for instance, maybe it's, I'm feeling really discouraged today. I'll go to passage of scripture and I'll remind myself of the hope that I have in Christ, maybe through even Psalm 23, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. And this reminds me to, throughout my day, to take the truth of God's word with me. And so maybe throughout the day, I will just be stating, the Lord is my shepherd. He walks with me. And this is the meditation I hold to combat discouragement. So maybe you can make some of your own. I would love to hear how you've been able to pause with God's perspectives. And then finally, I think something that we have to do daily, in and out, is continue to claim victory in what God has done. Sometimes when we are battling sinful thoughts or struggles that come from just being human, we can get really discouraged and shame can take over. And this in itself needs to be uprooted in our hearts. So claiming victory is a way that we practice reciting God's grace in and through our lives. Right when we have a thought that is contrary to God's grace that has been given to us, we respond to our critical self or to Satan's temptation with the grace that God has given. This is how we win, right? Is by reminding ourselves that we live in a state of grace. We do not seek to earn God's grace We live from God's grace and in God's grace and with God's grace. So now that we have kind of some tools and truths to continue to practice this empowered perspective, let's continue to press into these next areas that we've been talking about for the last few weeks. So we've been talking about our purpose, right? I don't know if you remember, but episode two, we talked a lot about what motivates us and exploring the the challenges of what it actually means to have purpose as a believer. So many times in my life, I have learned that I am much more a runner than a rester. And I'm learning continually that the practices of purpose found in scripture are very contrary to my makeup and to what I believe has more value. And so let's just review them. They were, number one, belonging to Christ. This comes as we accept Christ as our Savior and our Lord in our life. And then secondly, our abiding in Christ. This is resting with Jesus, coming to Him and finding rest, but also realizing that nothing we do, none of our good fruit can come except through Christ's indwelling, right? We are just a branch. He is the root. And through Him, we are able to have good fruit. And then finally, bringing Christ glory. I think sometimes... Even in my own life, I realize that my doing is what I feel brings God glory. But I think back to the passages in scripture where Jesus was with his disciples and so often he stopped to be with them before he sent them out. He would equip them before he would say, go now. And I also think of the woman who knelt down at Jesus' feet before he went to the cross And she poured out the ointment on his feet, right? And we read this story, and so often I'm like the disciples who say, what a waste, Jesus. She could have used this beautiful ointment um, and sold it and given the money to the poor. But Jesus says something. He says, what she did was beautiful thing. And so the way we give glory to God is not just in our doing, but it's truly in our being. It's truly being with God. 
the Lord and allowing His Spirit to just radiate through our lives. This can be walking down the street and giving a smile to a stranger. It's who we are, not always what we do. And as we realize, when we place our identity and our value and our worth and our purpose in what we do, we can be drastically and devastatingly disappointed by failure or by not meeting the expectation that we have for ourselves. So reminding ourselves that it really begins with sitting at the feet of Jesus. And then thirdly, we can step into a reoriented view of God's promises, right? In episode three, we talked a lot about reframing our faith because we have placed our faith on promises that are not in scripture. So the truth, right, that we came to process through together was that God's promises are found in himself, right? And anything, any promise that we are believing outside of God himself is not a promise of God. Um, And that can be really disorienting, I think, for a lot of us. I know it has been for me to be able to realize that the promises of this world are not necessarily what God's promises are for us. Um, He promises us heaven. And so let's just review some of the steps that we were talking through. You know, this idea of facing our feelings or running from them. This can be really challenging, right? When we are in a place where we feel like God's promises are not being met or we feel like God is letting us down, we have to really face those feelings, right? Take those thoughts captive and then look back to scripture, right? We have to identify that second step we talked about was what are we focused on truly? This is a great question to step into probably on a daily, weekly, monthly basis of truly what is our focus? You know, if it's placed on the temporal things of this world, it is going to be very disappointing. And I am constantly reminded of this on a daily basis that my focus has to be reframed and placed on heaven. You know, the Apostle Paul talks about this in Philippians 3. And if you have not studied Philippians 3 or read through it, go back, read this passage. Um, I have a whole blog series on it on my website. And it challenged my heart a few years ago. And so I pressed in and explored what it meant because Paul talks about here that he counts everything as loss for the sake of knowing Christ. And I think this is a really hard thing for us. Um, There's so many things in our lives that distract us from the value of who Christ is and who he can be if we allow him to change and transform us. And so do we know him? You know, do we count everything in life as loss for the sake of knowing him? And this is a practice and something that we have to pray for, I believe. But that that concept of knowing Christ, Paul talks about this in that passage, is not just like cognitive knowledge, but truly heart knowledge. You know, do we do we know Christ cognitively? Do we do we know the Bible? Do we know all the theological thoughts that Christian culture has given us? Or do we know? Have we experienced Jesus? And the more that I experience Jesus, the more that I get to know my Savior, the more His promises become so evident within Himself. And so my encouragement for you comes from a question that I was asked. I think it was from either a devotional or um, a conversation I had, but the question was based on this passage in Philippians 3. And it said, do you know Christ where you are today? And so this is the tool that I use to remind myself of God's promise to me. So in addition to, you know, reframing our thoughts and acknowledging our purpose and God's promises in our life, we also talked about this idea of people problems and the challenges of communication and emotional regulation and how scripture talks about all of these things, which I think is just such a blessing. Um, And people problems are continually a challenge for all of us. You know, we live in the world and we have relationships. And so how do we navigate this well? And in that episode, I talked specifically about conflict and using our words and the wisdom of God 
And this is something that I think I have been reminded of recently, even after I mean, writing this a while ago and being a, reminded about how wisdom always wins. And it doesn't feel like a win sometimes, you know, holding our tongue or moving away from conflict sometimes feels like we've lost. But in actuality, God is glorified in our patience and in our ability to withstand certain emotions or respond in love and mercy, right? And so the rules of relationship that I think I have been reminded of and that I speak about a lot in the clinical setting is that if we don't repair our relational hurts, we will repeat them. And this has been said in several contexts and written about and spoken on. And we talked about this throughout the episode, but I think the number one thing that we can practice if we want to have healthy relationships is first to heal our hurts. And this takes work. This takes self-awareness. Um, we know stepping into any kind of soul work that it is challenging. And as I mentioned in that episode, I highly encourage stepping into counseling or mentoring and going with a guide. Don't do this alone. Do this in community. Do this with people that are safe and supportive to the process and who will tell you the hard things, right? Who will challenge your perspectives and encourage you to press into what God's word is telling us. And so in addition to healing our hurts, I think sometimes, right, we talked about specifically this idea of our words and using our words wisely. Sometimes I have to tell myself this, that in doubt, don't say it, right? When in doubt, just don't. (laughs) And I think that using our words in rushed ways can really negate wisdom. And so going back to those questions that we processed through in the episode, you know, what is my motivation? Am I bringing Jesus into this with me? You know, going back and pressing in. But in addition to all of these, one of the aspects that I think can be really helpful, a helpful tool, is looking back to scripture and seeing again and again, you know, especially in Ephesians 4, Paul talks about this intrinsic change that happens to us as we have accepted God and as we claim Christ, we are called to unity. And this is something that I think we can take for granted or forget, you know, that we are called to forgive and be tender hearted, but we cannot do this alone. We have to bring Jesus with us, right? Again, it goes back to this idea of the source of our strength, the source of our joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. It is the Holy Spirit in us, and we need to be daily submitting to that in our lives. And truly, that humility comes with realizing that we can't do it ourselves, right? Um, To humble ourselves is truly to to allow ourselves to realize that self-reliance is not the key to our strength. And so I want to give a tool in addition to this. So be reading through Ephesians 4, pressing into what it looks like to be unified with the spirit of peace. So one way that we can apply this truth to our lives is by pressing into the idea of conflict resolution skills. And these are practiced. You have to learn these. These are not intrinsically given to us. And I think as we learn and and as God softens our heart, we become more open to practicing these things. And so I use the acronym CALM, C-A-L-M, connect, assess, listen, maintain. So first we have to acknowledge that in any kind of communication, we need to first connect with that person. Connection really helps reduce conflict and it allows us to be fully present in the moment with another person. In addition to connecting with that person, we need to assess our perspectives. What thoughts, there they are, those distorted thoughts again, that mind reading, that personalization, what thoughts are we bringing into this conversation? Have we finished the story already? Are we assuming something? Are we reading someone's mind, right? These need to be assessed within our hearts, our internal biases. And then we have to make an effort to listen, right? Asking clarifying questions, making sure that we're hearing someone correctly, and reflecting back what they've told us. And then finally, maintain. The goal of any sort of conversation, difficult conversation that is, is to maintain unity. 
right? Asking ourselves the question of, is this going to maintain my unity or am I starting this fight to create discord? So in addition to all these things, the last episode that we processed through together was this idea of pain and asking the questions of why. And I think I want to end this entire series by encouraging us to press into a passage of scripture that I think is so powerful because it holds the and, right? As I talked about in the episode of holding both coexisting emotions, David talks about the idea of holding both his questions and the hope of God in Psalm 42. He says this, Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember for the land of Jordan and Haram, from the deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls, all your breakers and your waves have gone over me. By day, the Lord commands his steadfast love and at night, his song is within me, a prayer to God of my life. I say to the Lord, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go on mourning? Because of the oppression of my enemy? As with a daily wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me, while they say to me all day long, where is your God? And then David ends again with reminding his soul. He says, why are you downcast, O my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for you shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. This passage is the accumulation of all of these things, isn't it? where we can hold coexisting emotions, where we can challenge our soul again to remind ourselves of God. But I want to encourage us with this, that hope, it does not mean that we are suddenly healed. Hope longs for the wholeness that God will one day restore, our certainty of what God will do that maybe has not come to completion yet. You know, disorientation separates us from God's spirit in some ways, right? We feel disconnected from God and that's why we cry out and ask him, where is he? And so something that I have been pressing into is realizing that in these challenges of disorientation of our soul in pain, we have to remind ourselves that we cannot keep going as we did before, right? Things have shifted. Those waves have knocked us over and moved us out of where we were. But God in his grace, in his meaning-making process, as we talked about in the last episode, he wants us to go deeper with him and allow him to hold us in times of challenge and change. And so a practice that I want to end our time with in this series and in this season is with the prayer of examine. I don't know if you're familiar with this practice, but Ignatius created this prayer that encapsulates both our feelings and God's presence that I think is just so beautiful and so integrative to our holistic healing process. The prayer of examine has five steps and some have more, just depends on what version you look up. But I wanna share with you these five steps that you can take into your daily practice of prayer. So let's practice this together as a meditation for our day. Number one, let's start by resting in God's presence. Maybe take a deep breath. Acknowledge the space that you have to just be still and invite God to meet you in it. And then take time to reflect. Reflect on the emotions you're experiencing, even in this moment. Are you stressed? Are you anxious? Are you hopeful? Are you anticipating something? What thoughts distract you from this space? Write them down, acknowledge them, and bring them back to God 
by asking yourself, what is God telling me in these emotions? What am I holding on to? What is he sharing with me about himself? And then third, we take time to repent as we've acknowledged the emotions and reflection, we can repent of some of these, especially if they are self-reliant. The anxieties of life often remind us that we are not in control. So we release and repent of the things that we cannot control, allowing God's sovereignty to hold us. And then fourth, we rejoice. Take a moment to think of the good things that God is doing. Maybe they are small. Maybe it is the fact that you can wake up in the morning and get out of bed. Maybe it is because you see the sun rise, you felt the wind on your skin. Hold on to and give praise and thanks to the things big and small that God is doing around you and through you and in you. And then finally, we look to renewal. Today is just a day, but tomorrow is another. And so whether we are in discouragement or we are claiming victory, we know that tomorrow God's mercies are new. And so we end our time of reflection in this prayer of examine by renewing our hope, by claiming God's grace and goodness, and by looking towards the future with a restorative perspective. I hope that these truths and tools throughout this entire season have encouraged your heart and empowered your soul and your perspective to hold fast to the hope of heaven. Oh Jesus, we thank you for who you are to us. We thank you that we belong to you, that we can abide in you, and that ultimately we want to bring you glory, God. And I pray that as we go from here, we will acknowledge that we have an empowerment of the Holy Spirit in us, working through us to renew our minds, to set our minds on things above, and to claim victory as we seek to live abundantly in the grace and goodness that you have offered us in yourself. Thank you for all the blessings, and thank you for what you will do in the days to come. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of Reframed, the Power of Perspective podcast. If you've enjoyed what you've heard, please subscribe and drop a comment. To access more content and to join my monthly email list for the latest updates and info, visit my website at carlymarkulier.com. Reframed, The Power of Perspective is a production of Life Audio and the Salem Web Network. If you enjoyed Carly's episode today, we would love it if you left the show a rating and review in your favorite podcast app. It really does help more people like you find the show. This podcast was produced by me, Kelly Givens, and Steven Sanders, with executive oversight by Stephen McGarvey. To find more faith-filled, encouraging podcasts like this one, just head over to lifeaudio.com.